Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Arslan from Peace Church, and it is so good to see you today. Blossom and I were just sitting here pretending that we were camping at the foot of a mountain called Mount Sinai, just like the Israelites are doing in our story today. Would you like to join us? I hope so. We're talking about the next lesson and how God leads his people. And if you remember the last time we were together, we talked about how the Israelites had escaped from slavery in Egypt through the help and protection of God. They were headed to the promised land. They were led there by a giant pillar of cloud during the day that God sent to, to direct them that turned into a pillar of fire at night. Remember that because that's going to be in our story today. Remember they didn't have much food and God provided for them, didn't he? He sent quail as meat for them at night and every morning they woke up to little white wafers of manna which was kind of a honey tasting bread that they found on the ground and they gathered to eat every single day so that they didn't go hungry when they were thirsty if you'll remember Moses tapped on that rock and water gushed forth so that they had plenty to drink um, not only for them, but for all their families and all of their animals that were traveling with them. And in the last lesson we talked about when we were together, if you'll remember, they were fighting the Amalekites who were powerful and very uh, experienced warriors, and God helped them to win that battle. Moses held his arms up, looking down over the valley where they were fighting, and he had helped to hold his arms up, and as long as he held his arms up, the Israelites won that battle. Well, God's still with them today, and they are on their way to the promised land still, but they are encamped at the foot of Mount Sinai, and some pretty important things are about to happen. We'll see how long Blossom stays up here to hear the rest of this. This mountain may have looked something like this. Do you see? that there's a giant mountain there. Above it is some clouds, and remember those clouds because they're going to be in our story today. And looks like whoever drew this picture was up on a giant mountain next to this and looking down in the valley there at the base of the mountain, all of that, that ring of things is actually all the tents of the Israelites where they have camped out with their families and their animals waiting for direction from God through Moses. This is where our story starts today. And you'll find the story because every word of it's true. It's in our Bibles. We know it's true. Here's Mrs. Arslan's Bible. It's in the book of Exodus, which is the second book in the Old Testament. It's in Exodus chapters 19, chapter 20, and chapter 24. So I hope you'll take some time later today or this week to read through that with your moms and dads and get all the details. Well, in the story, they're camped there, they're waiting, and Moses went up to meet God on the mountain. God spoke to his servant Moses right there on the mountain, and he gave him a very important message for the people that were waiting down below. When Moses came back down from Mount Sinai, he told the people God's message. Moses said, God wants you to know that he brought you out of Egypt. He saved you. He took care of you. He fed you. You are his special people and you'll always belong to him. Now be faithful and obey him. And the people that were gathered around, it may have looked something like this. Here's Moses speaking to the people after he's come back down off the mountain. The people that were gathered around said, we will do everything that the Lord wants us to do. Then God told Moses to tell the people to get ready because in three days, God was going to show his great glory to the Israelites. He was going to speak to them from the mountain. So the Bible tells us the Israelites got ready. They washed their clothes and they waited at the bottom of Mount Sinai. Now, they could not touch the mountain or they couldn't let any of their children or their animals touch the mountain because God's presence had made the mountain 
holy. Suddenly, there was a sound. Wow. There was a giant clap of thunder and lightning zigzagged across the sky, and I'm sure the people below were trembling as they listened to this sound, wondering what is going to happen next. Wow, they heard this giant trumpet blast. And the Israelites trembled as they watched and as they waited and as they listened. The sound of that trumpet grew louder and louder and the whole mountain shook as God came down on the mountain to fire and smoke. Then God himself spoke. This is what he said. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And God went on to give them what we today call the Ten Commandments. He redeemed his people, which means God saved his people. And then he told them to put him first and love him best. He told his people how to love others and how to treat them kindly. Then God gave Moses the rest of the law, all the things that God wanted the Israelites to do as his special people. And Moses told the people everything that God said. The people replied again and said, We will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. Then the Bible tells us that Moses built an altar that may have looked something like this one. He built it out of rocks that he found nearby, and he took blood from an animal, and he sprinkled it on the altar, and he sprinkled it on the Israelites that were gathered around. And Moses said, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you. The sprinkled blood showed that God had saved them and promised to love them and forgive them and to lead his people. It also showed that these people were committed to him and that they must obey him. Then God called Moses to go back up the mountain to receive the tablets of stone that God had written his laws on and his commandments for the people. And when Moses went up to receive these tablets, the Bible tells us that the glory of God covered the mountain in the form of that giant cloud that had led them earlier. And Moses ended up staying there for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, you'll have to come back next week to hear what happens next in this exciting story. But I want to go back for just a moment and talk about what happened today in God giving his people the law. You know, why did God give them the law? He knew that they were sinners and that they wouldn't be able to to do all the things they need to do or to do them perfectly. But he gave them his law to show them that he is holy and he's good and he's perfect and they are helpless and unable to do these things without his help. Even though they tried really hard, they couldn't keep his law. And God wanted them to be sorry when they broke his law and to turn to him for forgiveness. You see, when God gave the law to his people, he was reaching them and teaching them that God one day would send his son, Jesus, and Jesus would pay the price for all of their sins and for all of ours. God gave us the law too, didn't he? To show us that as his redeemed people, as his saved people, that's the only way we can live to please him when we accept Jesus and the price he paid for our sins. Can we obey God's law perfectly? No. Just like the Israelites, we disobey. We are born with sinful hearts, and we need a perfect Savior to pay the price for our sin. God loved us so much that he sent his one and only Son to die for our sins. And we need to trust Jesus to forgive us for our sins. And then God will help us in love 
to obey his laws and his commandments. Well, thanks for being good listeners today, boys and girls. We have a new verse, and I want to go over it with you because it's really important for us to remember, just like it was for the Israelites to remember. And it comes from that second book uh, of the Bible, Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, verse 2a. And this is what it says. Looks like a dad here teaching it to his daughter from the Bible. It says, and God spoke, I am the Lord your God. Exodus 20, verse 2a. Let's put some motions with that, would you? You know already, because we've done it in lots of other verses, that the sign language for Lord is that capital L, Lord. Well, that we're going to use that in our verse today. That's, let's do this. Let's do, and God spoke. I am the Lord your God. Exodus 22a. Let's do it again. Are you ready? And God spoke spoke, I am the Lord your God. Exodus 22a. What a great promise that was to the Israelites. And what a great promise it is to us that he will be our Lord, that he will be our God. And we know that part of that is that he will save us from our sins. Well, I think we should go and thank him for that, don't you? And the way we do that lots of times when we talk to God is we pray. Now, you know, you don't have to have your eyes closed if you are praying throughout the day in every circumstance, but it really does help us to focus. So I'm going to ask you right now to bow your heads and close your eyes and pray with me as we go to God in prayer. Remember, he is always ready to listen to us. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for promising to be our Lord and to be our God. We know that we can't always obey. And so, Lord, we ask you to forgive us when we sin, when we do things that we shouldn't do, or when we don't do things that we should do. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for us and to forgive us our sins. And please help us to trust and obey you. And we ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, for you to go out this week and share with somebody that your Lord, your God loves you and forgives you, I think that is the very best thing that you can do to be the light. And I'll see you next time. Bye now.